Hey, good morning and welcome back. Today we are going to extend our geometry knowledge and our algebraic proficiency a little bit with the Pythagorean theorem. You may have heard of the Pythagorean theorem before. The word theorem means that this result has been proven. It is true all the time as long as we're working under the right conditions. The Pythagorean theorem is something that applies to right triangles and tells us how the sides of the right triangles relate. Let's start the way we usually do with a little bit of vocabulary. So a right angle is an angle that measures 90 degrees. And a right triangle is a triangle that contains a right angle. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is the longest side. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell visually which side of the right triangle is the longest side. And as it turns out, the hypotenuse is always located across from the right angle. Let's check this out in a picture here. So the hypotenuse is located across from the right angle. Which one's the right angle? Well, we've got this little, uh, well, it's not in here, so we're going to draw it in. This little box, this little square down here in the corner, this indicates that we have a 90 degree angle. So if we start from this right angle and we go through the triangle to the other side, we land at the hypotenuse. The other two sides of the triangle are called legs. The legs don't have to be the same size, so we'll call this leg here leg number one, and we'll call this leg over here leg number two. It doesn't matter which one is one and which one is two, it just matters that we know where they are and that it's possible for them to be different sizes. All right, the Pythagorean theorem has been presented in textbooks for a long time as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And me personally, I really don't like this because it doesn't help me remember which side is supposed to be A and which side is supposed to be B and things like that. Um, I like it as leg squared or maybe leg number one squared. So we take the length of the first leg and we square it, add it to the length of the second leg. So we have leg two squared. And what we end up with is the length of the hypotenuse squared. So first leg squared plus second leg squared gives us the hypotenuse squared. There are a lot of right triangles floating around in geometric applications. If we are looking at a diagram, we can think of the slanted segment. Oh, there we go. There's our diagram. Something like this as the hypotenuse.
of a right triangle. All we have to do is imagine this right triangle in here. If I drop down a vertical segment, add in a horizontal segment, and then we can find that distance over there. As a matter of fact, let's try one that looks like this. As we find the length of our slanted segment and round to the nearest tenth. So the first thing we're going to do is draw in this invisible right triangle. We'll drop a vertical segment, we'll put in a horizontal segment, remind ourselves that that's a right angle because sometimes our drawings aren't so great, and we're also going to remind ourselves that this is not to scale. right? Clearly if we were going from left to right for seven and a half feet, this giant segment here would not be two feet long. So things are not to scale, they're just labels. But Let's see what we can do. If we look at these horizontal segments, we have two feet here, we have seven and a half feet all the way across, how large should this segment be? Well, the total length from left to right has to be seven and a half. We've already used two, so this one must be five and a half. And we can do the same thing with the vertical segments. We've got this segment here. The total up and down length is 8, and this total up and down length is 1.3. So the missing value for the vertical segment must be 8 minus 1.3, which is uh, 6.7. And so now we're looking for the side there, that hypotenuse. And what we have, right, leg squared plus the other leg squared will give us the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse is our unknown side. Our first leg is five and a half. Don't forget to square it. The second leg is 6.7. Don't forget to square that. And we end up with the hypotenuse squared. So everything needs to be squared. Whenever people make mistakes with this, it's almost always because they forgot to square something. All right, so here we go. Uh, five and a half squared. Let's check that out. 5.5. 5. Uh, use our squared key over here. And decide that that is 30.25. Plus. 6.7 squared is 44.89 equals the x squared. So on the left hand side I want to add these two things together. 44.89 plus, right, I can just hit the plus sign and the previous answer is already being incorporated. 30.25 We have 75.14 is equal to x squared. Now we're not done yet, right? This x is still being squared. And just to check, even if we thought 75.14 was the answer, if we put it over here, this clearly wouldn't make sense. The bigger sides are only 8 and 7. The slanted length couldn't possibly be 75.14. How do we undo a square? We take a square root. So the square root of 75.14 will be our value for x. Of course, this isn't going to come out to be a nice number. Second and square root. And I want to put that last answer right in there. And you see right above the negative key, I have a little a and s. I can use that to put that last answer right inside that square root. And we come up with about 86, sorry, 8.6, not 86, 8.6, 6, 8, 3, stuff, stuff, stuff. We would like to round to the nearest tenth. So we have 8.7, and these of course will be feet. Okay, let's try another.
Here we have just a basic right triangle, and we want to find the unknown length. Always start with the equation. Leg squared plus the other leg squared will give us the hypotenuse squared. I like the word equations because it keeps us from putting numbers in the wrong places. 27 is a leg. The other leg, that's our x. Both of these values are being squared. The hypotenuse, 38.4, right, located right across from the right angle. And of course, the hypotenuse needs to be squared also. Okay, so let's see what we have. 27 squared is 729. X squared stays as it is. 38.4 squared is 1,474 and 56 hundredths. And to get this x squared all alone, oh, we need to use a little algebra. Subtract that 729 from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, of course, right? Big fat zero here. And x squared is now all by itself. We'll use our calculator. We'll take this last answer and subtract off 729 to find that we're left with 745 and 56 hundredths. And now we know how to undo this square, right? We take a square root so that we have the square root of 745.56. And that's about, all right, so do you remember how we did this? We would like to say the square root of that previous answer. So use that second answer. And there we go, about 27.3049 stuff, stuff, stuff. All right, our instructions were to round to the nearest hundredth. Right, find the hundredths place, look to the right, we see a four, the hundredths place is going to stay the same. So we have 27.3 and keep that zero. When you round to the nearest hundredth, we need to have an answer that ends with hundredths. And we'll talk about that a little later when we start discussing accuracy and precision. All right, on to the next page. Climbing up on the roof, we want to be safe with the ladder. And of course, a ladder leaning against a wall creates a right triangle. All right, we'll assume that the ground is flat horizontally and that the wall goes straight up and down. The working length of a ladder is something that we calculate by taking these three feet off the top. And this three feet here is a vertical up and down distance. It's not exactly this distance here, but it's pretty close. So this Y is about three feet. It's actually a little bit longer because we know this y is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, right? There's our right angle right in there. Um, but it's just a little bit longer. So we approximate the working length of a ladder as the total length minus three feet. The minimum horizontal distance, that would be this bit over here, this little pink arrow, we find by dividing the working length of the ladder by four. All right, so here's our problem. What is the maximum wall height with which a 30-foot ladder can safely be used? All right, so the working length. We start off with the length of the ladder, which is 30, and take away the three feet that need to hang over the top of the roof. And that gives us 27 feet up against the wall. The distance away from the wall we would take that 27 feet and divide by 4. So 27 divided by 4, 6.75 feet.
All right, this is enough to give us a right triangle. Let's see what we have. So we have the wall. I don't know how tall it is. I have the ladder leaning up against the wall. That's 27 feet long. And I have the distance away from the wall, which is 6.75. Don't worry about drawing this to scale. Just worry about getting everything in the right place, knowing where the hypotenuse is, where the right angle is. Okay, so now we're ready to use the Pythagorean theorem. And what we know, of course, is that the leg squared plus the other leg squared gives us the hypotenuse squared. Six point seven five is a leg. The other leg, that's our unknown, that's the x. Don't forget that the x needs to be squared. The hypotenuse is 27, and we have to square that as well. So let's see what we're working with. 6.75 squared is 45.5625. x squared, we still don't know, so we'll just bring it down. And 27 squared is 729. How do we get the x squared all by itself? Well, we subtract. Subtract 45.5625 from both sides of our equation. And see what's left over. On the left hand side, of course, we have this big fat zero here and x squared is all by itself. On the right hand side, I don't know, let's see, 729 minus the last answer that we had, second and answer, there we are, 683 .4375 Clearly this is not our answer. There's no way the wall is going to be 683 feet tall. And of course we're not done yet because we haven't taken a square root of anything. For those of you who like to save space, you can do something like this and take the square root of x squared. And remember that what you do to one side, we have to do to the other. So the square root undoes the squaring and we are left with x all by itself. And of course, the calculator is going to give us a really long decimal. Right, second square root of that last answer. There we go. About 26, so that makes sense. 0.14 stuff, stuff, stuff feet. So if we were going to round this to the nearest foot, the wall really shouldn't be any more than 26 feet tall. Okay, one more. One more application, I meant. It's time for us to talk about impedance. Impedance is in an electrical circuit, and it measures the total opposition to current flow. In a circuit. We call impedance or we label impedance with a Z and we measure it in ohms. So we have more than resistance that limits the flow of current through a circuit. You remember resistance, that of course is R, but if our circuit happens to have a capacitor in it, then we have something called capacitive reactance. And we call that X sub C for capacitive. So this is something that comes from a capacitor. 
And of course, we have inductive reactants when there's an inductor in the circuit. And this is labeled as X with a subscript of L. Now, capacitive reactants and inductive reactants are out of phase with the voltage. So when we talk about the total opposition to current flow, we can't just add them together. We have to use what's called a vector diagram. The nice thing about this is that they are both out of phase by 90 degrees. So we end up with some right triangles. With capacitive reactants, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So the X sub C is here pointing up. The resistance is this blue line pointing to the right. And the impedance, that total opposition to current flow, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. The same thing happens with inductive reactants, except for the fact that the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. So the X sub L points down. The resistance still points to the right, and the impedance is still the hypotenuse of the right triangle. OK, let's try. Slide this up a little bit. We have a resistor and an inductor connected in series and an AC circuit. OK, so first thing we want to do is draw our triangle. The resistance is 425 ohms. So we'll label the horizontal segment with 425. The inductive reactance is 324 ohms. And the impedance here is Z. So when we look at our right triangle, we know that we have the leg squared plus the leg squared is the hypotenuse squared. So 425 is a leg. 324 is the other leg. And the hypotenuse is Z. And don't forget to square that. All right, let's see what we have. 425 squared, oops, not 422. 425 squared is 180,625. 324 squared is 104,976. We add those together, and we end up with the impedance squared, that z squared. All right, so let's take that last answer and add it to 180,625 for a total of 285,601. Always draw a picture when you're working with the Pythagorean theorem just so that you don't mistakenly stop too early. Right, 285,000 is way too big for this hypotenuse here. Of course, what we haven't done yet is to take the square root of both sides. And I'll do that in red just so you remember it's important <laughs> and we don't want to forget it. All right, so over here on the calculator, we say I would like to take the square root of that last answer. Right, second square root and then second answer. And we come up with something much more reasonable now than 285,000. This is really 534.4165 stuff, stuff, stuff as our value for Z. So the impedance is about 534, and of course these are ohms. All right, last one. Let's see what we can do here. We now have a capacitor and a resistor in the circuit. 
the capacitive reactance is 199 ohms and the impedance is 207.8 ohms. We are looking for the resistance. All right, so the first thing we want to do is draw our picture. The resistance is here on the horizontal. The capacitive reactance points up, which we know is 199 ohms. And the impedance is here on the hypotenuse is 207.8. So Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. The first leg is 199. The second leg we don't know, that's our resistance. And the impedance is the hypotenuse, 207.8. Don't forget to square each one of those. All right, from here we know what to do. We've seen this before. 199 squared is 39,601. R squared stays as it is, equals comes straight down, 207.8 squared, 43,180.84. In order to get that R squared all by itself, we need to subtract the 39,601 from both sides of our equation. Right, great big zero over here on the left side. R squared comes straight down, equals stays where it was. We'll take that last answer on the calculator and subtract off 39,601. And we end up with 3,579.84. Take the square root of both sides. Square root undoes the squaring. On the calculator, second square root of that last answer, second answer, and find out that we are right around 59. 0.8317 stuff. This time let's round to the nearest tenth because our impedance was given to us to the nearest tenth. So the resistance is about 59.8 and of course those are ohms. Okay, and that's it. Good luck with your homework, and we'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.